Freddie Mercury and the Indian Connection Freddie Mercury lived most of his life in the UK when he wasn't traveling the world on tour with Queen. But did you know that Freddie Mercury actually grew up in India? Today, we'll be exploring all Freddie's connection to his roots. Freddie's parents, the Balsaras, were born in a section of India that was ruled by the British back then. This western region of India, known as Gujarat, has a distinct culture from the central and southern portion of the country. India is known for practicing the Hindu faith, which shaped much of the country's culture, values, and even policies for centuries. Freddie's dad, Bami Balsara, left his home along with his large family of seven brothers to travel to Zanzibar to find work. And he got a job as a cashier for the British High Court. This job made him travel to India frequently, and it was there that he met his wife, Jer. Together, they had a son on September 5, 1946, named Farouk Balsara, who would grow up to become the star known as Freddie Mercury. The young Farouk left home to Panchgani, India, to join a boarding school called St. Peter's Church of England. It was here that he got his nickname, Freddie, that would stick with him throughout his life. Even his parents called him Freddie without much hesitation. There, he was seen as a bright student, and it was there that he found music. As his music passion grew, his interest in traditional school fell. So, he left the boarding school two years early and returned home to Zanzibar to enroll in the Roman Catholic St. Joseph's Convent School. Before Freddie's 19th birthday, the Balsaras left Zanzibar thanks to Balmy's British passport to flee from the brutal Zanzibar Revolution. After they got settled, Freddie was pressured to get a degree, so he went to Isleworth College and Ealing Art College and earned his degree in graphic art and design. It wasn't until 1970 that Freddie Balsara finally became Freddie Mercury after years of buildup. Brian May said that Freddie's surname change finally came to be through a line in the Queen song, My Fairy King, which says, Mother Mercury. In Leslie Ann Jones' book, May recalls, Freddie said, I'm going to become Mercury, as the mother in this song is my mother. He also said, I think it helped him be this person that he wanted to be, and the Balsara person was still there. But, for the public, he was going to be this different character. Freddie's name change relates to his time in India in a very interesting way. Freddie came into the rock scene at a time when it was dominated by U.S. and U.K. artists, and it's possible he felt that he had to whitewash his own name to fit in. Plus, the political climate of the U.K. meant Freddie had two uphill battles to contend with, his sexuality and his ethnicity. Freddie started singing with Queen not long after Enoch Powell gave his Rivers a Blood speech that turned citizens against immigrants. So, Freddie's tricultural heritage means these various countries are vying for their places as Freddie's home. Rami Malek, the actor who played Freddie, was born in the USA with parents from Egypt, so he understands the pull between his fans at his current home and the fans in another country where he technically descended from. It's hard to be a hero to so many people, and when talking about Freddie in an interview with GQ Middle East, Malik said, whether it's Persian or Indian or British, everyone's going to claim him. Freddie's faith is another interesting angle to look at with his Indian Parsi roots. His youth in Catholic schools no doubt prepared him for life in the UK. But here, we see another source of conflict, a consistent theme throughout his life. The Catholic faith is known primarily for its belief in Jesus as a savior. The theme of redemption and salvation are central to this religion, but Freddy, a bisexual, was seen as a sinner simply for being himself. This conflict no doubt plagued him throughout his life as he struggled to come with terms with his identity and sexuality. These themes are also present in Queen's biggest hit, Bohemian Rhapsody. However, while Freddy lived in a Catholic school, his parents weren't Catholic. Instead, Freddie was shaped by a variety of religious and cultural practices that are unique to India. Freddie's first encounter with spirituality came from his parents, who practiced Zoroastrianism, which is one of the world's oldest religions. As Freddie grew older, he became less concerned with the religion, but faith definitely played a role in his early life. When he was eight, Freddie participated in Navyote, which is the Zoroastrian coming-of-age ceremony. Once again, 
Bohemian Rhapsody touches on Freddie's Indian connection with references to his Indian Parsi heritage. I'm just a cool I need no the line, good thoughts, good words, good deeds, is a quote from the Avesta, the Zoroastrian sacred book. Zoroastrianism did have some influence in India, with people like Freddie living in the western part of the country. While Freddie's background in Zoroastrianism differs from these other beliefs, he was no doubt exposed to both Buddhists and Hindus during his time. While Freddie was Indian Parsi, the fundamentals of Zoroastrianism are much more similar to the Middle Eastern beliefs like Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. These faiths share some similarities with the Indian tradition of Hinduism, like the emphasis on deities and worship, but Zoroastrianism also contrasts Hinduism and Buddhism in some major ways. These are essentially atheistic variants on these faiths, which put more of a focus on the practices and beliefs that have a tangible benefit here on Earth. Practices like nonviolence, self acceptance, vegetarian diets, and most of all, meditation. It's unknown if Freddie was an active meditator, but sound of meditation was definitely a real thing. And it's very possible that Freddie was able to tap into a unique state of mind while he was rocking out on stage. While Freddie's exposure to so many unique religions became a connection that would stick with him throughout his life, he struggled to be religious himself, especially considering Zoroastrianism condemns homosexuality, considering it a form of demon worship. Freddie's decision to change his name might have been a way to distance himself from the guilt and shame associated with his sexuality. Mercury? No looking back. Only forward. Going back to Freddie's own former last name, if you've seen the biopic Bohemian Rhapsody, you've probably seen the dramatic reveal scene where Freddie's girlfriend and his bandmates learn that he was actually born with a different name and raised in a different country. Farouk? Did Farouk not tell you he was born in Zanzibar? No. He did not. Freddie's parents are insulted that he chose a different name. But Freddie steals the show with a piano number and a vocal performance to boot. But how true was this scene? Well, at the very least, this scene glosses over a huge part of Freddie's personal life. Alongside the film's borderline absent depiction of Freddie's sexuality, the scant portrayal of his youth was one of the largest criticisms handed down to the movie. Freddie was so much more than just his sexuality and just his upbringing. But these are key steps throughout his life that led him to become the rock star legend we know and love today. Rami Malek, the actor who portrayed Freddie in Bohemian Rhapsody, even spoke out about the backlash the movie faced in an interview with USA Today, saying, Freddie had a beautiful relationship with Jim Hutton, and we had a finite period in which we wanted to tell this story. Freddie Mercury is a gay icon, and he's an icon for all of us. I hope people do not feel that the film does a disservice to the community. And if it were me, I would have loved to have incorporated more. Of course, even the lead actor has little sway when it comes to the overall direction of the film, but it is nice to see that he recognized the value of showcasing this side of Freddy's life. <laughs> Freddy accepting that he was bi was game changing for him. I think I'm bisexual. Admitting who he was inside cost him the first love of his life and sent him down a road of heartbreak and paranoia since LGBT relationships were largely taboo at the time. Freddie's music reflected both the love he shared following his coming out moment and the conflict he felt being forced to hide who he really was from the public eye. In the same way, Freddie's past in India both laid the foundation for who he would later become. The eclectic background in both lesser known religions and in a cultural melting pot allowed Freddie to connect to members of all walks of life. These early experiences shaped his songwriting, so it's a big reason why Queen songs are so easy to relate to and so emotionally resonant. <laughs> Plus, Freddie's transition from a humble beginning to the lap of luxury is an incredibly inspiring tale by itself, and it makes all the other parts of Freddie's story all the more triumphant and powerful. Oh, I'm extremely rich. Do you like being rich? Of course. What do you do with your life? I flaunt it. It's really a shame that the biopic left out such a vital part of Freddie's backstory. Do you think they would have been better off splitting the movie into two parts to give more time to flesh out the more intimate details of Farouk's life? 
It's hard to go back and rework the biopic that's already been made, but either way, hopefully we can all appreciate Freddy's incredible Indian connection.